Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to talk through a very tricky scenario. It actually came up in our Q&A session today, and it actually stopped me. So here we are. If you're looking at my screen, I have a Power Apps form, and the whole, the whole idea behind this form is that you would submit an idea on a Power App, select the technology for that idea, and what we want to do is limit who they can assign this idea to for review. We don't, this is a people picker. We do not want them to search our entire Azure AD, but rather have them limited to a certain number of users that are config in a SharePoint list. And here's the key. This list can have multiple entries for that technology and the column can actually have multiple values. In this video, we're gonna show you not only how to achieve this, which is a little complex, but we break it down, but also how to achieve a simple version of this where there's a one-to-one -one versus a one-to-many. A lot to unpack here. Let's get started. Okay, so this is gonna be very interesting, and I was stumped during the QA session today but I think I got it figured out. So what we're trying to achieve here, let's just kind of recap. We have a form and this form is really just going to grab some information. And then uh, one of these options is going to be a drop down, right? In this drop down, they're going to select a category from that category selection. We want to control who they select in the people picker as an option. So we control this people picker selection through a separate list. There is a config list and the config list is very simple. It just has the category name and then it has the approver. Category name, approver. Category name, approver. So based on this category, it's gonna match on one or many of these. And then from those selected uh, approvers, from that selection of matches, that's what we're gonna limit our user from connecting to. Let me show you this. There is another scenario. This is scenario one. Scenario two is one that's a little bit more tricky and takes a little bit more creativity with the formula. Same config list, but this time you have the category and you have multiple approvers. Category, multiple approvers. Category, multiple approvers. Again, this can be a one of many match based on this category. You probably will question, why would you have a situation like that? That's beyond the scope of this, of the why, but technically, how do you make something like this happen? Meaning that if there is a match with one or more of these, so that's a match and this is a match, then our drop down should include this approver as well as these approvers and one selection. All right, so let's figure out how do you do this. Let me just go back to my SharePoint list. This is the idea list. The idea list was really, I have an idea about some technology and then based on those ideas, we want to select, assign a approver to take a look at it, right? And this is just the, the list that's gonna be bound to our Power App form. And these two lists here, this is that lookup or that config list I was telling you about. We're actually gonna start with V2 on trying to crack the code on how do you make this happen. So here you can see I have Power Apps, multiple entries for that, and then the respective team member or approver that the requester can select from. Approver is that I have my technology drop down. If I hold down my Alt key, these are my different selections, and I also have the assigned to. So as a requester, based on their technology selection, they should be able to choose from who they want to review their idea or request. We don't want them to search the entire Azure AD for everyone inside of the organization. We want to limit them using that config list to only this technology selected. So how do we do this? So the first thing we want to do is to bring in the technology config list as a data source. Once we have that in as a data source, we can now select this drop down, the default option, and replace that with our technology team config list. 
Okay. Now, once we have this, this is going to bring in everyone. But again, we only want the one selected from this user. So let me show you what you may be attempted to do. And then I will backtrack a little bit and show you the right way to do it. So your attempt may be to filter this right here on the um, items property. You want to filter this where the title equals the selection from the dropdown. Now, I want to use this selection in the formula. So I select that component and give it a developer name, a developer friendly name. So we just call this VTech. And once I have that, now I can go back to my items collection, filter that where VTech.selected.value equals the title. So that's going to give me a, a, a result set based on that selection. And here's the sample of that result set. Now what I'm interested in, I'm very, I'm only interested in this column here because this column is going to have my approvers for the selected category. So what I, what I can do, I can then go down to teams and that's going to narrow that to the team column. And now we expect this to work. So if I hold down the alt key and I click on this, I get blank fields and that's fine. So I select this, click on properties, go to edit. And now what I want to do is start to map out based on that record, which properties of that object or which properties of that record I want to display. But you notice this is filtered out. And the reason for this is that we have more work work to do, right? Because what we have here, if you look at this teams in, in the sample, we just have a bunch of records here, but our drop down, because we're pulling this in a dynamic way, it has no idea on how to map this together. So let me show you a different way of doing this. So let's just go ahead and select this, copy this out, and let's arbitrarily create a global collection. Let's just call this COL approvers. This is not gonna mean anything, and we're gonna get red squigglies until we define it. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch my formula to a different control and have my formula built and hydrate that collection variable based on the change in this dropdown. Because this is what triggers my assignment to selection, right? So, and again, the reason why I'm doing this is that I need to hinge this, my formula, I need to hinge it onto a user clicked event versus a standard property. And the, the user action or the user click event would then kind of trigger it because I'm gonna have to get a little fancy with my formula. So with that said, let's go ahead and select the on change event for this dropdown, the technology dropdown. Let's go ahead and paste in what we have so far. Now, what we can do, let's expand this out. Remember, we have that global variable or the global collection. So every time this is changed, we have to change that global, we have to clear that global collection out. I have to be very careful to paint name these the same. And then once I have that, now what I need to do is iterate through or loop through this team collection and then save each one of those records into this global collection variable, right? And the formula for that, the special method method is going to be the for all. So once I do the for all, it's going to look for a collection to iterate through. That's going to be this what's brought back here in the filter. And then you need to tell it what to do for each record in that filter. So in our, in our case, we want to collect, mean add items to this collection. So the collect approvers. And what do I want to collect? I want to collect each record. And there's a special, so this record is the special syntax for that. And if I close all my parentheses, that should do the trick. Now, if I test this out, if I make a selection, again, this drop down change is what's triggering that filter. And I hit this sign to that's blank. And if I go to power apps, that's blank again. So I feel like I'm back in the same spot, but actually in actuality, I think I'm better off this way. Oh, I think I actually have a syntax error in my formula. So instead of filtering that by the team column, I actually want the entire record. And then for the this record here, I'm gonna tell it I only want the team column. So let's test this and see if this resolves it. So if I hit my drop down, hit power app, there we go. And then if I hit my drop power automate again. Now you would notice that as I'm collecting, to, clicking through this drop down, I have this weird uh, UI error. That's only in my Power Studio. So if I save this off and then approve it or publish it out, that tends to go away. So one of the things here, I can actually reset my Power App Studio, just refresh it. I have everything saved, I have it published. Let me close this tab. Let's go back into Power App Studio and then we can run another test just to make sure everything is 
working as expected. Okay, so now that I'm here, let me go into the preview tab, select a category, hit the drop down. Now this looks a lot better. Select another category, hit the drop down. But notice that once I do that selection, it gives me the claims. This is what you call the claims token for each user. And that's not what we want. So we can get very uh, precision on and precise on exactly what we want to display. So selecting that drop down, click the edit. Notice I'm selecting the drop down and not the data card. So make sure you select the drop down, click edit. And then here, instead of the primary text, the one that's displayed and uh, displayed once it's selected, you actually want to use the display name. If they want to use the search feature, you want them to search on the display name. And then for the secondary text, I can either have that as email or department or even job title so it really depends on what your requirement requires now image and pictures that's a natural fit so I think we're good there so now that I have my edit capability selected let's test this again so that's gonna be power apps and now I select it and now that's when I'm expecting the person's name versus their claim ID and if I select another option select it and then again that's ex exactly what I'm expecting okay so now that seems to work uh, pretty good so the other scenario we want to test is how do we do a, a different list schema where the schema is a little bit different where the team column instead of having a single uh, selection it actually has a multi selection for the person group field now in that scenario what we want to do let's go back to our power app studio bring in our other data source and this time I'm going to select technology team without the v2 and just go through and make a few updates to my formula so here on the drop down where I have the orange change event I expand this down I'm not looking at technology team v2 I'm actually only looking at technology team and now what's what's going to happen is that let me just see if I can show this in the whiteboard what's going to happen is that now I have a situation where each one of my records for the team column is actually going to have multiple records so it's actually going to have a table within it and that's how power app names its collections they name them tables so each one of these records are actually going to have in these sub tables and I also have a scenario to where uh, even though it has a table, it may only have one item within that table. And these are all my other columns that are going to be part of that result set. So because now I'm dealing with a collection within a collection. So when I when when I first get this item here, uh, this is going to be the initial collection. Now what I need to do is to generate an inner collection, an inner loop within that loop. And this inner loop is actually going to be on this item here and that's how I'm I'm going to be able to filter on or iterate through all the the sub table that's in this columns in this team column and once I have that now I can do the, this record which is going to be the record associated to each record or each person under the team column and now once I close all my parentheses I should be good to go so now if I test this out here you have the multi select for power apps and if I go to power automate you would notice that and then if I go to modern SharePoint so let's just confirm so for power apps I'm expecting Kevin, Ashley, Madison, Christian, Andre, Benjamin, and Rachel. For modern, I just expecting Kevin, and for Power Automate, Kevin, Deshaun, Deshaun. So if I test this out, if I go to Power Apps and hit the drop down, I get Kevin, Ashley, Madison, Christian, Andre. Rachel and Benjamin and this is what we expect and now if I test the other one just to ensure that these are updating I should have two Deshaun's and Kevin for Power Automate and then for Modern SharePoint I should have Kevin but notice one thing uh, if the user makes a selection so they selected Kevin and then in the Power Automate they select uh, they change the technology type and once you hit the drop down, you can select an option where Kevin is not part of the list. Um, in this case, I don't see that. So let me, uh, so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that though when they make a selection, there could be a situation where they change it, but they never update it. So you may probably want to put in a clear in the drop down change to clear out any selection that they may have so far to kind of force them to reselect. So let's see if we can figure that out. So here I am in the drop down. I just want to change the reset and this reset function allows you to reset a actual control and the control I want to reset is going to be this control here again because I'm using it in the formula I want to give it a developer friendly name so let's just call this v assign and now in my reset function I can simply add it there so 
before I hydrate the new collection based on the change, I'm going to clear out what was already there. I'm going to reset my control so it expects a new value. And then I'm going to run through my inner, uh, my dual loop or inner loop scenario. So if we test this out, notice how it gets cleared. I make a selection. If there's a change, it gets cleared out. I make a selection and now this is working as expected. Okay. So a very interesting scenario. And I'm so happy that someone asked that question during their Q and a session. As I mentioned before, you can always submit questions or solution ideas or any type of walkthrough or how to series you would like to see by submitting your questions in the form, the link to the form below. That's it for this video. Any questions or comments, use the link to that Power App Ideal form, which is in the description text, or leave it in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you next time. Take care.